So welcome back to the channel. I'm Sunny and this is Someone Else's Cloud. If you're new here, I create videos to share my knowledge and my experience on all things cloud. My main focus is Azure because that's what I do day to day. But if you want to learn cloud or DevOps things or upgrade your ninja skills, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification and let's get started. So good morning. We're here again. Another Cheat Code Tuesday morning. I've got my coffee ready. I've got crane noises outside. Um, I thought I'd try and shoot this before work. I'm not sure if that was a great idea, but we'll see how we go. So let's get right into it. So Azure Pipelines. Now, did you know that you can actually turn your pipelines into templates? Why would you want to do this? The obvious benefit is turning your pipelines into reusable code and as a result, removing code duplication. Now, an example of this would be if you had a pipeline that collects data from multiple sources and then you had another pipeline that would do build configuration from the data that you collect and then you had another one that basically um, built and deployed, I guess, um, your configuration. So an example is you could have a pipeline here that calls the first one, collects data, and then you have another pipeline that will build configuration, then you have another one that will basically deploy. And that the, each pipeline is obviously a collection of tasks, so um, it's basically a good way to reduce your code. And you can also repurpose your pipelines to other pipelines, I guess. Um, there is another added benefit. Now, I don't know if this is the way it should be, but this is my experience, is pipelines don't actually appear in the Azure DevOps GUI. So it adds a layer of abstraction and security where someone can't modify the backend template unless they push code into your repo. Um, so I kind of like that, that sort of masks the backend and it just presents a front end which has a, you know, potentially a, a scheduler or a trigger and then it basically calls all the other templates. So you can kind of see what it's doing, um, but you can't actually see the backend and modify it. So I kind of like that as well. So let's get into the demo. If you've seen Cheat Code Episode 1, which is improve your Azure pipelines with variable groups, uh, what I've gone and done is copied uh, all the code there. So you can see here I've got a pipeline here already. But what we're going to do is let's create a new folder called templates. I like to just have a bit of structure when you're creating templates. So I try to store the templates in another folder. So we're going to move uh, this temp this pipeline into this folder and we're going to rename it. So we'll just rename it to uh, cheat code template. Generally, when you think of pipelines, there's basically stages and then there's jobs, and then there's steps and then tasks. So when you're utilizing templates and you're calling them, you just need to um, sort of consider that you're injecting them into your existing pipeline. So for this purpose, we're going to take out all the variable groups. Now we're not going to use variable groups. What we're going to do is we're going to pass through parameters. Now, uh, variable groups are a bit funny at times. so. Uh, an example is um, when you pass through a variable group from an overarching pipeline into a template, uh, I don't think you can actually use uh, the service connection if it's a reference in your variable group. How I got around that was I passed through the actual service connection name itself as a parameter rather than trying to use it as a variable group. Now, I couldn't find any solid information on the internet to say what was what, but some foreign forum did elude me to something that you can pass everything through a, a variable group, but you can't pass through a service connection for some reason. Let's clear all this out. So we're going to get rid of uh, everything. So all triggers, everything's gone. But what we need to do is we need to add uh, inputs, uh, AKA parameters. So let's just go parameters. Now we give the parameters a name. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace the values that I use uh, for the variable groups. So we're just going to um, create one called uh, asset name. So these are going to be obviously the parameters uh, that will be imported into this template. And then we're going to do a replace of everything. So then we'll, we need to just give it a type. So it's just going to be a string and then uh, default is false. Now, I'm just going to copy this a few, four times. And I'm just going to copy and paste everything. So we're going to add a very uh, environment and then a location. And we're going to create another one. We're going to pass through the service connection um, just just in case you want to use this template across multiple subscriptions um, or multiple tenancies, let's say. So what I've gone and done is I've updated it. So now let's replace this first one. So the way that you call parameters in templates is it's a dollar sign and then you've got these uh, squiggly lines and then it's parameters, uh, parameters, dot and then the parameter name so it's going to be the service connection 
I don't know if you need spaces in between, but all the examples I've seen have it and I haven't actually tested it. But what we're going to do is this service principle, we're going to find and replace all of them with the new parameters variable. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go through and do the rest. So if we just replace this now, so... <sighs> oh, hey there, hope you're enjoying the video. I'm just having a coffee with a friend here. Hey, where's your coffee? Oh, I just signed up to buymeacoffee.com. What's that? So now you can show your appreciation to the channel by buying me a coffee. That's such a great idea. I know, right? Don't forget, you can show your appreciation by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. So enjoy the rest of the video. See, See ya. ya. Uh, this will be parameters. And then delete that. And then I don't know if you need spaces. You probably don't, but I haven't tested it. Um, so just want to make sure that I don't have typos. So what we're going to do is uh, do a find replace as well for these. So we're going to replace every single value in this template with this. And then basically we'll just go through and do, do the rest. Now I'm just going to copy and paste so I don't make typos. And then if we just replace the last one, which is location. Okay. So now you can see uh, my Terraform code will... Um, sorry, just got to roll back this indent. So I've also taken out the apply. I uh, just want to show you the plan because I don't want to sit here and wait for applies the whole time. I think it's obvious that we know what it will do. Um, so obviously this is uh, going to install Terraform. It's going to configure the back end, but it's going to use these parameters this time. Uh, and I need to change my working directory, I believe, as well. So uh, just let me replace this. Oops. So I've renamed this to, um, renamed it to the episode name. Okay, so, so that should be it. So it's going to basically configure the back end. It's going to do a validate and then a plan. So then we'll walk through the plan just to show you um, the attributes that have taken um, effect or that have been um, the parameters that have been inputted. So, that, so that's basically a template. Now, if you have a look at it, we've got incoming parameters and then we've got a whole bunch of steps. So what we need to do now is we configure, we create the overarching template that we'll call this. Now, I've already gone ahead and done this. So in the root directory, I've gone and created something called build underscore pipelines. So if you go here, I've already gone and created this and I've obviously already run it because I want to make sure it works. Now, if I just edit this. Hey guys, so I'm just going through and editing this video and I just noticed that um, my browser colors are all funny. So I was like, what's going on? So it turns out I turned on HDR on Windows 11 and Snagit doesn't like it. So when I was recording the screen, Snagit sort of blew out all the colors. So apologies for that. But anyways, let's get back to the video. See ya. You'll see here. Uh, now I've got my, my triggers are just set to none and my PR set to none because um, I'm going to manually invoke this. But obviously you can put schedules, you can put triggers and branch changes and everything else. Uh, and then basically I've got the pool standard windows uh, latest and then I've just got a stage here Which is going to be deploy all so obviously you can create this as multi stages if you want But for the purposes of a demo, I've just made it multiple jobs. So they run in parallel just so it's quicker um, but then I've got here which is uh, Just a display name and then you can see here that I'm referencing uh, the template so the templates um, it's referencing the templates folder and then the template name. So you just got to make sure that wherever your pipeline is, the folder, the the file structure or folder structure or the location needs to align. So um, obviously I've got this file in the root folder, and it's basically going to the templates folder and then the cheat code template. And then I'm going to pass through uh, the parameters, which is going to be uh, asset name, environment, and then location. And then I've got the service connection. So I've just got this random Terraform one that I always use for these demos. So this is going to pass it through. So we'll just do a quick run just to show you uh, what it's going to do. My expectation is um, all those attributes would be fed into the RG name, location, and where it's going to get deployed. So let's just wait for this to run. So it's just going to initialize and it's going to pass through all those parameters into the template. But as you can see, this thing will expand out and you'll see all, all the actual tasks from my template will appear. Um, so I'm on the poor man's Azure DevOps plan, so just waiting. 
Okay, so you can see here, so it's going to install Terraform, do the init, and then the validate and the plan. So that that's straight from the template. But as you can see, my my overarching template was just um, just one stage with two jobs. Uh, so you can see the benefits here. Uh, obviously, I'm running them in parallel, so you can see they're both going. Uh, and we'll just we'll just run through this, and we'll wait for the the plan to execute whenever it runs. Okay, so we're back. So you can see the plan here. Uh, if it loads. So you can see here that uh, the first one, which is dogs, um, you know, I just use pet names because I try to keep it short. Um, I, I've run into issues with long resource names. So I'm, I'm running out of three or four character uh, references. But you can see here it's applied uh, the asset name and then the environment. And then you can see in the RG name, it's the asset name, the environment, and then the location. You can see all the parameters have passed through into the template. So if you go look at this cats one, um, this will obviously have a very similar structure. So you can see cats, dev, uh, West US, and then every other attribute is obviously cascading through. So, you know, so cats, dev, everything else. So that's basically it. So as you can see, turning your pipelines into templates can be quite beneficial. But as you play with them more and more, you'll start understanding the pros and cons. Um, sometimes it's simpler to not have a template, but then sometimes a template will simplify your solution. But it's very easy to sort of over-engineer a simple solution as well. So sometimes it can add uh, a layer of unnecessary complexity. I'll link all Microsoft documentation below. Uh, all the code is in GitHub. And this is another Cheat Code Tuesdays, and I'm signing out. See ya!